Hi everyone and welcome to today's video. If this is the first time that you're seeing me, I am the Hermit Tarot and this is my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a pick a group tarot reading. We're going to be having a look at your love life as we close this July month. It was really important for me to do another love predictions reading this month. Um, I haven't had a lot of time to do as many videos as I wanted. For those who didn't know, my energy has just been very frugal, um, but I will get back into it in August. And at the time that I'm filming this, we are still coming out of the new moon in July energy. So I really wanted to take advantage of that new moon in Leo and get another love reading out to you to help you navigate those energies and just get you as much information about what's going on in love for you. So we do only have three groups to choose from. I just want to stress before I introduce the topic that it is so important that you check up on your intuition or you just use a reliable source to pick your group um, just to make sure that you're getting information that is actually helpful. So I do have a one minute meditation that will play in today's clip. The timestamps are in the description box. Um, if you want to use that meditation to connect with your intuition, it literally only goes for a minute and that is a guided meditation to connect you to your intuition to help you feel which group is most helpful for you. But we are going to be asking spirit in today's reading, what is going on in your love life? So for the YouTube portion, we're going to get a very in-depth look at what is going on in your love life by having a look at what happened in the recent past. We're going to have a look at what's going on in your present. And then we're also going to have a look at what's happening in the near future. So a lot of information. We will also be getting advice for you as well. Now, there will be an extended reading for each of the three groups where my goal is to get more specific information for you. Um, the extended readings are usually a lot smaller in terms of the amount of people that watch them. So it's a lot easier to get more specific, direct information. The topics that we'll be covering in the extended reading, let me pull it up. I have it all on my phone. We'll be asking spirit more about the main person that comes out in your reading and more about their personality, how they're feeling about you and channeled messages from them. And I'm filming your intro after I did all of your groups. So heads up, you all have one person, at least one person who comes out in your readings. So we're going to get more information about them. We're also going to have a look at the blockages you experience in love, how to overcome them, what they are in the first place and how to overcome them. We're going to have a look at the next big changes in your love life. And the way that I'll be doing that is we'll have a look at your next big changes in the immediate future, in the next couple of months, and then within the next year as well. So a lot of information there. And then we're going to get a advice throughout the reading. So that is what we cover in each of the three groups when it comes to the extended reading, a lot of information. So without further ado, let me introduce the three groups to you. Starting with group number one over here, we have the animal Orion's animal tarot deck. Each of the groups will be showcasing their nine of cups card. So in Orion's animal tarot deck, this is the Nine of Cups tarot card. We have a beautiful dog with the Nine Cups framing across them like an arch. And we have a lot of interesting colors on here, which could provoke certain emotions. It's up to you. If you feel drawn to this card, you are group one. Group two, you have the Trippin Ride Away tarot deck. This deck is still fairly new in my personal collection, but it is a favorite amongst certain readers. Um, very cool design on this card, the Nine of Cups card. We have a genie coming out of a bottle, or that is probably a very ignorant way of calling that thing, but that's, that's all I knew. That's what I grew up knowing. So correct me down below if there's a better name for it. And we see the Nine Cups forming an arch behind the genie with the trippin colors in the background. So if you feel drawn to this card, you're a part of group two. Last but not least, we have group three with another fairly new deck, my Dreamy Moons Tarot deck. 
beautiful deck. If you want to get your hands on this deck, I do have a link to tarot stack down below. This deck is incredible. I love it. It's not really a beginner's deck, but it's still very easy to kind of pick up on intuitively. If you're more of a reader rather than an intuitive reader, um, the guidebook is very informative and interesting. So it's not too hard to use. It just takes a little bit of time. So the nine of cups in this deck shows a person sitting on a lotus leaf surrounded by lotus flowers. And we have the nine of cups above them and that very beautiful yet standard, standard beautiful <laughs> illustration of Dreamy Moons is um, golden details around the cards. Very typical Dreamy Moons in a gorgeous fashion. That's the back of the card. So if you feel drawn to this card, you are a part of group three. So that's all from me in the intro. Pay attention to the timestamps. When you know which of these three groups you're feeling most drawn to, click on your timestamp in the description box and join me in your reading. So the first thing I want you to do with me is to take in two deep mindful breaths. Breathe in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four, and in, two, three, four, and out, two, three, four. Now I want you to focus on clearing your mind. It's natural to have thoughts racing at this point. I want you to embrace each thought as it comes and let it slip as quickly as it came in. Focus on clearing and balancing out these thoughts so that they come and go without a desire to be attached to them. And now, with a rested mind, I want you to think of the first group that comes to your mind. It may be a number, it may be an object that I showed you, it could be a specific colour, it could be a feeling that you felt when I showed you each of the groups today. When you are ready, and when you feel confident, select your group and join me in your reading. Hi group one, and welcome to your reading. If you chose the animal, Orion's animal tarot over here, let me show you the cards that I have at the top of the deck at the moment then this is going to be your reading. Welcome group one. We're asking spirit, what is going on in your love life right now? This is also going to tell us what is going to happen next as well. Um, as I said in the intro suites, I'm going to do an extended reading where we'll get a lot more in-depth information. The main purpose of this reading is to see where you're at now to help you figure out where you can go next. So without further ado, Let's get in, excuse me, into it. <laughs> I'm going to be pulling cards from this deck, but I'll be clarifying with another deck. Um, that way <clears throat> we have heaps of cards to spare just in case we get duplicates. Spirit, please tune me into group one's energy. Please help me provide group one with the most honest, clear information about their love life. What is going on in group one's love life, Spirit? What is going on in group one's love life? Okay, so the first two cards I have for you are the Two of Swords reversed with the Knight of Swords upright. Beautiful. Oh my gosh, it's a better fish. I literally have a better fish tank right now getting prepped for my new better. Um, some people say beta, but it's better. It's better. <laughs> anyway, what happened in the recent future for group one when it comes to love? Excuse me, what happened in the recent past? What happened in the recent past? We have the three of pentacles. If she'll focus, there we go. And spirit, what's happening in the near future for group one when it comes to love? What's happening in the near future for group one when it comes to love? What's happening for group one in the near future when it comes to love? we have the death card and we will clarify all these cards as I said 
Um, at the back of the deck, your overall energy is the Seven of Pentacles. So as an overall energy, it feels like this is a group where there has been a change in your love life, instigated by your feelings of, am I investing in the right things? Because I'm not seeing the results that I want. You don't want to waste your effort. You don't want to waste your time. And you also don't want to accidentally commit yourself to something that you may regret in the future. So this is my group who is being very practical about how they move forward when it comes to their love life. You would be also feeling frustrated by any feelings of stagnancy or any signs that you may have accidentally um, given too much in the situation or put too much effort into something. Or on the opposite, there are some of you in this group who feel frustrated by the fact that you may not have put in enough effort and time into something. But let's get my clarifying deck out and we'll start talking about the past here. So in the recent past, we have that three of pentacles reversed. And what that three of pentacles reversed is telling me is in the recent past, it felt like you guys were either not aware of how many admirers you have or just trying to really keep your head down and stay focused on something very specific when it comes to your love life. Usually the three of pentacles is about working together and meeting people through friends or co-workers or in shared environments. And for that card to be reversed, it either feels like you weren't aware of how much attention you were getting in shared environments, or you were really trying not to um, mingle with certain people. So what is going on here with the three of pentacles? We have the tower. So this to me feels like frustration over a sudden change that could have pulled you away from a connection that you were fostering. I feel like you've spent some time trying to figure your situation out, trying to understand what are my options in love? What do I want and how do I want to move forward? It feels like you guys are trying to work with somebody on this. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you have a close friend or if you're in a relationship, you and your partner were trying to kind of work through these changes. I just feel like you could have been distracted by other things though. Um, and some of you assumed that there was also third party interference on the other side, or you had other things pulling you away and were interfering with your ability to focus on love. Um, if you did, I feel like it would either be work or family or friends. And with the tower here, I just get this strong feeling like this was either very sudden, unexpected, or it happened in such a demanding way that your energy couldn't go towards fostering connections that you wanted to in the recent past. Is there anything else they need to know about their recent past when it comes to love for group one? We also have the star card. So I do feel like you're a group that gets attention. You may have been on dating apps or you may have put yourself out there in a position where people could see you. I feel like you're looking for something very specific though. At the back of the deck, we have the three of pentacles reversed again and the three of chalices. So I feel like you're looking for something very specific. In the recent past, you were kind of either weighing up your options or you were turning people down even. Like I could see how you were trying to remain hopeful and kind of keeping your eyes on some sort of wish that you wanted to come true when it comes to your love life. Excuse me, I just got to wipe my nose. It's going to start running. It always does when I channel, but if you didn't know, I was also sick recently. So trying to get rid of that last bit of phlegm, very gross. Um, it feels like you have, in the recent past, you may have even realized like, wow, this is not what I want actually, I want something else. And so you had to distance yourself from certain things, distractions potentially, um, but it could even be people and focus more on a different idea of what you wanted. Um, it just feels like a huge realization over here and a change being a part of it. And all of that kind of forced you to look at what you wanted differently. Um, I do think that you separated yourself from something or someone 
And I think that that was about you, like the way that you handled that was really civil, if I can say. Like it feels like you nipped something in the bud before it could get too bad. How do they feel about that? The name of chalice is reverse. Some of you feel like you didn't hand this, handle the situation well. You feel like you have guilt or there were some things left unsaid. The king of pentacles. I just feel like you're trying to focus on something bigger. Like if there was a connection that wasn't growing or it just wasn't your idea of like long term or it wasn't your idea of what you need in your life right now even because your life seems to be demanding, then you had to kind of set your standards higher and cut the fat is what it feels like. The three of cups. I feel like some of you could have been flirting with someone even or like really growing, like developing playful feelings for them. And before it got any further, like I'm seeing all these knaves reversed, before it got any further, you had to nip it in the bud or the situation was nipped in the bud. It didn't go past a sexual connection if it was that, you know, otherwise it was just an infatuation or um, a feeling of having an admirer. Um, so let's have a look at your present now. In your present energy, we have that two of swords and the knight of swords. So I feel like with these two cards, group one, right now, what's going on in your love life is you, if you haven't already, there's a strong feeling of you making your mind up about someone and deciding to move forward with them, deciding to move forward towards something. And if it's not a person, it's very clear that something that happened in your past has influenced you to move in a very specific direction. And it feels like with this two of swords reversed, you had at least two things that you could have done and some information really forced you to go, okay, well, that's not an option anymore. So it looks like I'm going with this instead. There is a desire to take fast action here with the Knight of Swords. Is that going to be group one taking action or is someone taking action towards them? I feel it being mutual. So whatever you are wanting to pursue is pursuing you as well. We have a younger energy though. This person could be slightly less mature. Um, they strike me as someone who you have already have your eyes on. There is already chemistry with this person. Um, and if you are of that part of the group where you're like, I never meet anybody. <laughs> I have no idea who she's talking about. Just know that the person coming in next for this group, you're going to have a strong chemistry with them. There's also going to be a bit of a sweetness to this person though. They strike me as being somewhat um, younger or, or less mature or just like a, a bit playful, um, especially with a page. A page is someone who is feeling like optimistic. They're very bright. They come across as bubbly at times. And this page of wands is also a very passionate person, a creative person, someone who likes to take things on. So I wouldn't be surprised if this is somebody who has is also looking for something exciting and they find and you're finding them exciting but they're finding this connection with you exciting if that makes sense like I just see someone who's almost on a journey a new journey when it comes to love so what else can you tell group one about this person how will they know this person spirit How will group one know this person? You will have feelings for them almost straight away. Um, this person is showing up as a queen of swords. So at times they could look like they're reserved, um, analytical. I feel like there's a side to this person that loves to be observant or they, they kind of, there's someone who is very witty I would argue that they're charming with a queen of swords and a page of swords, a page of wands energy. Someone who has like an, a certain energy about them that draws a certain type of person towards them. I want to say they're intimidating as well, though, slightly um, with the queen of swords here. Like they could have very strong eyes or striking eyes. Sometimes the swords energies represent really like eyes that stand out, um, either because of the color or because they, the way that this person stares, if that makes sense. Um, 
I feel like for some of you, this person has really dark and cold eyes. Like they could death stare a polar bear into extinction. That's terrible. Um, I take that back. <laughs> Words are powerful. Don't die polar bears. But anyway, the king of the queen of swords here, it just feels like this person has a lot to their personality that like they're intelligent, they're funny, they're charming, strong Libra energy. I feel like with you, they're going to be very flirty, but I don't think that's the case with everybody. Like I would argue with the queen of swords that this person's a bit intimidating, <laughs> you know, not the easiest person to approach. Um, but this combination, the page of wands to the queen of swords, I feel like the two of you are going to have good conversations. This person may see things differently to you. Um, they could be very smart and I just feel like they're funny, but they're also very flirty with you. So what else can you tell group one about their love life right now? We have the Knight of Chalices reversed. So it feels like this is a situation that has been struggling to move forward romantically. I feel like this connection is gonna start off as playful. And right now it's very clear that for some of you, you already know this person. You're just struggling to advance things romantically with them. And that's what this Knight of Chalices reversed is saying. There are blockages when it comes to displaying appropriate amounts of affection or romantic intention to be able to get the connection moving forward. Um, in the way that you want it to, we have the six of wands reversed as well. So I do feel like some of you are feeling like this person just doesn't see you or the situation is very unsuccessful because you're struggling to get noticed or recognized by them. Some of you have just felt like you've been unsuccessful in your efforts. What efforts? Why am I saying it like that? Um, in whatever efforts you've taken, it just feels like you haven't been able to overcome I hope that makes sense. And I want to say that this could be someone that gets a lot of attention because of their energy. Like this is giving me like mommy or daddy energy, if that makes sense. Like even if they're not, because they come across as someone who like has a really outgoing side, but then a really sort of cold side as well, where they just withdrawn a bit and they like to look and observe rather than be a part of the extroverted action. So I think it depends on the situation and how you see them, where you see them and who's with them to provoke those aspects of their personality. But I want to say the six of wands is like, maybe they get attention and you feel like you don't, you don't rise up in comparison, um, or you're just feeling underappreciated by this person right now. Is there anything else you, they need to know about their present circumstances when it comes to their love life? <clears throat> okay. We have the Magician. At the back of the deck, we do have the Hierophant. So I feel like for most of you, you're hoping for positive change in this connection. For most of you, I believe that you would be um, communicating with people, maybe getting advice or just trying to seek advice on how to get this connection or your love life in general moving forward in the best direction. I do feel like this is a group that's seeking some level of commitment because they think that you're a group that wants stability in their love life, especially if you've experienced chaos or levels of destruction and change, let's say destructive change in other aspects of your life, that your love life you want to be easy or, or somewhat simple. And I think that that is a good energy to put out there because although this person things may have been tricky or murky, I feel them wanting the same thing because the two of you have a lot of potential and I feel like they are in a position where they're growing into, um, like they're not kind of, they don't have really rigid walls of expectations and, and barriers of standards. This is someone who... They know enough about themselves to have boundaries, but they, with that page of wands, are also curious and open to exploring and growing. Um, so there's a lot of potential here. Now, in terms of what else you need to know, we have the Temperance card, the Magician, and the Six of Swords. Temperance is reverse. So right now, your love life is incredibly dependent upon your confidence levels, how you see yourself, how you choose to communicate with people that you are romantically interested in and how you use opportunities to communicate to move forward, if that makes sense. Like I see the opportunity for you to 
see this person, but it's up to you to start the conversation to move forward, if that makes sense. Um, it's like the universe is going to put the two of you together, but they can't force you to speak to each other. We're not puppets, you know, we're a part of a bigger collective energy. And this is something, this union or this coming together feeling with temperance here is really about you. First of all, setting that intention or being very, very clear to yourself on what you want. And then second of all, starting that conversation. I really feel like it's a conversation. For some of you, it could be travel. You may need to physically be in the same location as this person. I believe that is definitely going to be made possible. Um, but with this Gemini energy, it just feels like communication, communication. Let me throw some other air, um, some other air signs on oh my Lord, some other signs out there. So far we have Aries, Aquarius, we've got Sagittarius, Gemini, what else do we have? Taurus and Scorpio. So we've got a lot of signs so far. Let's have a look at your near future now. <clears throat> In the near future, you have the death card. So there is going to be transformation. And the death card actually came out with the five of swords. So I feel like a lot of this transformation in your love life in the near future has to do with you communicating and how you choose to communicate. For some of you, the five of swords, it was representative of you walking away from a conversation that wasn't helpful, turning your back on someone that hasn't been fruitful. And for others of you, it's just about changing the way that you approach a connection to allow more growth. Because the goal of this death card is to end an unhelpful cycle and really focus on birthing and growing a new cycle. And I feel a lot of this being in your hands, group one, I can't lie, mostly because you're showing up as the magician here. So you're showing up as someone who has experienced some change that was well out of your hands, um, some really destructive energy and something falling apart. And now you're in a position where it's up to you how you rebuild. So what is going on in the near future with this death card for group one? What else can you tell group one about this death card? Um, Spirit is saying you need to stay focused on the bigger picture because you either are either someone that gets a lot of distractions or you're someone who can easily get confused by irrelevant temporary things. At the back of the deck, we have the Nine of Wands. So there's a strong energy of, with you of don't give up. In this deck, the Nine of Wands is two people really trying to communicate. Um, even though he's got his hand over her face, it feels like two people who are trying to make the energy work. And usually the Nine of Wands in traditional tarot is about either trying to really persevere through a really challenging situation, giving it your all, literally your last breath. Or for me as a reader, I look at it as there's got to be a better way to do this. Re-strategize and reconsider how you're investing energy because you're going to burn yourself out at this point. Work smarter, not harder. So I do think that that's what the death card is saying in your case. I think that you do have to put effort into this, but work smarter, not harder. If what you've been doing hasn't been working, consider another approach and really go for it because it's not about giving up on the situation. It's about reinventing your approach here. So let's have a look at your other cards. We have the Ace of Swords. We have the Devil. Oh, some Capricorn. We have more Gemini with the Lovers card. To be fair, sweets, you've got a lot of Major Arcana. <clears throat> We have the Empress, that's like, wow, and the Hanged Man. So Taurus and Pisces, a lot of Major Arcana, a lot. So you've got a lot of signs out here. Now, <laughs> I do see you being afraid of, of making the wrong decision. I feel like in the near future, you're going to realize that you had the wrong idea or that you, you maybe took some premature assumption or action based off a of premature assumption. And it's not too late to remedy the situation. With the Ace of Swords reversed, you're revisiting an old idea that you may have turned down too quickly. And I feel like with the Devil card and the Lovers card, this has the potential to be very compelling for you. There is an attraction in your near future. It's probably this person that's in your present. Um, 
that is going to be very consuming, especially if you know that you're someone who becomes quite obsessive or if you know that you're someone who um, has a lot of chemistry with this person. It feels like this could just be experiencing a lot of sexual freedom with this person, um, sexual intimacy. But with the lover's card, I also believe that that's you um, choosing how you move this connection forward. And I think that this is just a group where you and your person are needing more intimacy and growth in that way, if that makes sense. So I do see sexual intimacy in the near future. I also see with the lover's card, you getting more key information that helps you feel more empowered about the decisions you're making in your love life. It feels like you're spending significant time with someone. And if you're not, then you're really trying to spend a lot of time clearing out the unhelpful thoughts in your mind and focusing more on the information that is helpful. I feel you being very empowered. So I believe that in the near future, you're definitely going to have all the answers you need, especially with the hanged man to make decisions that are helpful and beneficial to the growth of your love life. The hanged man over here is saying, You've gonna, you're going to get the clarity, the perspective that is helpful in growing something. And I feel like it may not have been the initial perspective that you had, especially if we're talking about this person. Initially, you may have looked at the situation as being too challenging or too incompatible, or maybe you were distracted by other things. But I think that your impression is going to change and your view of, of how your love life is growing is going to change. I feel a significant connection over here. I'm not going to lie. I see growth. I see longevity. I see important decisions. I see self-empowerment, self-awareness, key communication, sexual intimacy, sexual union, sexual exploration. And I also see a feeling of really falling head over heels. I'm not going to lie with the devil and the lovers and the empress and the hanged man. This is like obsession energy. This is like, um, they're all I think about. They're all I see. I see them everywhere. I smell them everywhere. Like this is very strong energy. So let's get you some advice now. What is the advice for group one when it comes to their love life? Oh, what is the advice for group one when it comes to their love life? Hi. Oh, bless. One more card from this deck, please. Thank you. We got two. At the back of the deck, we have the world card. Tie up those loose ends, sweet pea. Tie up any loose ends um, and don't be afraid of starting a new fresh cycle. Don't be afraid of double checking just in case, you know, is this the thing? Because I see that you may, for some of you, revisit an old idea or an, a situation that you could have, would have, should have taken up sooner, if that makes sense, because you have the freedom to now. <clears throat> what is the closing advice for group one in this, in their love life? What is the closing advice for group one? Hey, the back of this deck, we have memories. So there is something in your past that needs to end. It's either a way of thinking, a behavior, or just an idea that has been limiting. I don't believe it's a person, but all of these behaviors and ideas could be attached to connections. It's more about a mindset for you, appreciating how how you've been seeing yourself has been causing blockages. And we're going to talk more about blockages in your extended reading. The first advice card I want to show you is this love card, the tomatoes card. In this deck, it's connected to the water element, Libra. And what else do we have on here? The number 30. So spirit is really calling for you to embrace love. Um, there's a strong feeling of partnerships. There's a strong feeling of growth in your group, of a new beginning and really bringing balance back into your life through solid partnerships in general. So for some of you, you may need close people to help you bring this together, like close friends. But for most of you, it just feels like you have to believe that you deserve that as well. And you have to remind yourself that that's what 
it is that you need right now. I think some of you may have messed around with temporary connections um, because that's what you thought you needed. But I definitely think that this is a group who is more focused on serious connections or people who at least are gonna give as much as they take. The first card that came out for you was the Ace of Wands though. So your group has a lot of creativity, passion and sexual energy. And in this love reading, this Ace of Wands is encouraging sexual intimacy with the right person in the sense of there's a feeling of you unlocking, a, a feeling of freedom through intimacy with this person that's in your present and your future. I feel a lot of confidence coming from this, but I also feel like a powerful release of your personality as you gain confidence in your physical body or your sexual, um, what's the word, um, self, let's say, you're going to start to express yourself more authentically. And I feel like there is a new opportunity for you in love, even though the cards didn't reflect that, this new opportunity could be a do-over with somebody who is already in your life. If not, it's about you being in that confident, open state of mind where you are observing the opportunities that spirit is putting in your path because you definitely will have the chance to meet this person very soon if you haven't met them already. We also have the Four of Cups and the Full Card. So this is a group that is being strongly encouraged to not waste opportunities and chances, to move forward, to take a leap of faith with that trust card and to trust that in this situation, the universe has your back. This is what you have been waiting for. Some of you have been questioning that specifically. This is what you have been waiting for. So that's what I'm seeing for you, group one. I'm gonna take this into the extended reading now where we'll have a closer look at this person's personality. We're also gonna have a look at the blockages in your love life. We're gonna have a look at the immediate changes and we're gonna get more advice as well. When we look at this person, we are going to get some channeled messages so if you would like to join me in the extended reading, the link is in the description box. It's all ready to go when you are. Before you go, group one, I just want to thank you so much for all of your time, your energy and your support right here on YouTube. Thanks for supporting me, this community and free tarot in general. And I hope to connect with you in another video. Bye. Welcome to your reading. If you chose the Trip and Ride Away Tarot over here, then this is going to be your reading. Welcome in. Or should I say welcome in? Now, this reading is going to be asking what is going on in your love life. We're going to be having a look at your recent past, your current situation, and then your near future. There will be an extended reading as well, and we'll see what we cover in your extended um, at the end of your reading, we're basically gonna expand. All right, so let us get into a group two. Oh my gosh, my fingers are not working. I just had lunch too, so I don't know if that means anything, but clearly it does to my body. My body's like, rest, chill. All right, group two, please spirit. Please tell me what is going on in group two's love life currently. What is going on in group two's love life? Okay. Actually, no, sorry. Oh, wait, okay. Mm. Let me keep those. Um, what happened in their recent past? What happened in their recent past? Okay. And what's going on in the near future for them? What's going on in the near future for group two? Okay. At the back of the deck, we have the Page of Cups as your overarching energy. In the recent past, you have Temperance and the Lover's Card. In your current energy, you have the Seven of Cups. Welcome. <laughs> and in your near future, you have the Fool. Wow, group two, you hit different. Your group hits different. First of all, with the Page of Cups being your bottom deck energy, can I just say, I feel like right now, most of you are either getting to know someone or you're trying to really 
be in a fun and friendly, flirty energy when it comes to love. I see some of you really meeting a lot of people, while for others of you, there is one specific person that you're kind of focused on. Now, I'm getting that for this group, you have a crush or there is an energy of somebody having a crush on you with the page of cups. Your current energy seems to be one who is trying to be flirty, receptive, um, but you're keeping things fun and somewhat casual for the moment because it feels like we're still developing the situation to a certain extent. However, in the recent past with temperance and the lover's card, it definitely looks like your group was either faced with some a major decision or in a situation where you felt like you had met someone very profound, like this person stands out, the situation with them is healing, but it's also progressive. I feel like your love life took a positive turn and it helped you feel more optimistic about the direction that it's headed in. But I can't help but feel with the lover's card that you were thinking about someone or a situation with them quite heavily. Not in a bad way, but just that this person was very much weighing on your mind, group two. And I think that with temperance here, there is a feeling of coming together and needing to draw inner strength or, or inner, I don't even want to say strength. It feels like we're having to draw in inner like energy to be able to make this happen. So for some of you, you could have approached someone in your recent past or somebody kind of made it obvious that they were interested in you and you're the one that had to really kind of reciprocate in a way that was a little bit out of your comfort zone is what I want to say. I do think with this rainbow here, there's just this beautiful almost butterflies feeling and even if you didn't have to make a big deal out of it, I feel like you definitely felt a strong connection here, a strong connection. Um, and I want to say with the lover's card, maybe you were trying to figure the situation out afterwards and you might have talked yourself out of, of believing it too soon because it almost feels like we're trying to stay both optimistic while also not be too blindly optimistic like I can't help but feel two sides of the coin here like trying to be optimistic and then trying not to be blindly optimistic so let's get some clarifiers out what happened in the recent past for group two when it comes to love <clears throat> a significant person though for sure with temperance here um, and either they were very different to your usual type or just very different to what you're expecting and yet they seem to be just a very warm bright energy with this Sagittarius energy so what happened in group two's recent past when it comes to love we have two cards we've got the two of pentacles and the nine of wands so I definitely feel like it was a situation that either required courage or a level of vulnerability where you had to kind of open up and let the other in um some of you guys just were trying to shoot your shot at someone or someone was trying to shoot their shot at you and you just didn't know. You were like, is it the right time? Do we both want the same things? Um, now, if you don't resonate as having a person, I could see how you had just made your intentions very clear to yourself about what it is that you're seeking in a relationship and what it is that you want personally. And I think with the High Priestess and the King of Pentacles here, you definitely seemed to share like somebody or something inspired you to want to maintain a level of standard here in your love life. And it feels like the standard is very high, but it also feels like you were left feeling divinely guided in the situation. Like you didn't have all the answers at the time. You just had your feelings, your thoughts and a recognition of something very profound happening. I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of synchronicity going on at the same time. Like I'm always seeing like 
music cued that fit the the situation as well and you listening to the words going what what the heck this is so relevant to what's happening to me right now or you know seeing synchronistic numbers like 111 222 1111 etc or hearing your name being called in the crowd at the same time or realizing that you both have the same name something synchronistic seemed to have happened um, so in your recent past, I feel like there was a bit of a change here because you realized exactly who or what you want and doing so meant that you had to also change your strategy in love and you also had to be more aware of your energy and how you invest your energy in love. So for some of you, this realization, which could or could not have happened from the presence of another person coming in. <clears throat> meant that you had to let go of something else as well. You had to restructure your approach and potentially let go of stragglers that were not fitting the bill of what you want right now. It's a very interesting message. We, In your present energy, we have the Seven of Cups. So despite you feeling so clear over there, it's not like you don't have confusion now. I feel like you're a group that has choices group too, um, whether that's a choice between people or whether that's a choice in a relationship or a situation. You're kind of like, well, what do I do? For some of you, if you have been single and you think you're ready enough now to mingle, you're trying to figure out what to your next source of action should be in terms of how you could meet your next person. But I see that you're looking for clarity with the Ace of Swords. You're trying to figure out what to do next in your love life. I feel some of you even debating whether or not to get on a dating app or whether to just kind of stick it out in a different scenario. Um, and that will only resonate for those who have made up their mind about what they want but don't have a person yet. So what is going on with the Seven of Cups in Group 2's present energy? Very confused. We have the King of Swords. Yeah, you just want clarity. Some of you are seeking a conversation with someone. Um, you want to ask them a question. You want to ask them out for some of you. You're trying to get information. Um, I also feel like you're trying to get control of the situation. And I think that you just want to be clearer. So some of you are trying to figure out whether the person that you like likes you back. You're trying to figure out if the situation is going to work out the way that you feel it is because you feel divinely guided in a specific direction right now. We have the two of wands. It feels like you're looking for reciprocity. You're looking for more signs. You're looking for confirmation that the path that you want to go down is the path worth journeying on. And so I see the two of wands as you trying to get to know someone better, but also trying to figure out whether moving in this direction is the right way forward before you get too comfortable in that direction. Um, is there anything else you can tell them about their present? We have the chariot reversed. So I can't help but feel like in your present moment, there are some delays here and there is fear standing in your way as well. There's this feeling of what if I'm wrong? So I feel like some of you have a crush and you're not sure how your crush feels. Who is their crush spirit? We have more Sagittarius energy, temperance. My gosh, Sagittarius has been haunting me lately. Um, we also have Pisces, so strong Jupiter energy. And we have Cancer and Aquarius, I guess. In terms of major arcana, there's also Gemini. Now, your crush is coming across as someone that is very inspirational. They're probably very attractive. Um, but with it being Sagittarius, like it doesn't really matter what this person looks like. Their energy is attractive. I also feel like this is somebody who you feel you have to be patient with or careful with. Like this is someone who <clears throat> I'm hearing I don't want to mess it up. <laughs> okay. You might see this person quite regularly, group two. <clears throat> well, the opportunity to reach out to them could be very easy. As in it, it presents itself frequently or it's it's like an online thing and all you have to do is send a text. But for some reason, you're being very careful. And I do feel with temperance being here twice that there is a feeling of patience in this energy. Um, but I can't help but also feel like you're practicing moderation. You don't want to rush or you don't want to move too quickly. 
What else can you tell us about this crush? The world card. This could be representative of like a brand new cycle for you, closing one chapter of your life and starting a new chapter. I definitely think this person is very attractive. Um, you have, you're in a position where you can kind of appreciate each other, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like you're very attracted to this person's body. Maybe their hair as well, but their body. Um, for Sagittarius to be here, it could be this person's way of expressing themselves. They could be very creative or they could come across as someone that's a bit independent. I just kind of feel like this world energy is you putting this person up on a bit of a pedestal as well and seeing them as a huge new shiny door opening and I'm hearing, am I ready to open that door? Or is that door going to open for me? Spirit, what do they need to know about this crush in their present situation? <clears throat> we have the Hierophant. So <laughs> you're being called to take a more practical, traditional approach in this situation. This, comes, this person comes across as being very structured or just someone who is looking for something serious. I also see you guys getting advice and... While I think getting advice is the right thing to do in any situation, because it can be a wonderful way to offload as well, I also think that you need to get advice from people who can give you advice for the right things. Obviously, you wouldn't go to somebody for advice who isn't um, wanting the same outcome as you. I feel like you need to know that this person wants something more serious, though. What else do they need to know about this crush? Okay, we have the death card and we have the moon card. They could be hiding how they feel. It looks like queen of chalices as well. This person is very good at hiding how they feel, but they feel a strong connection to you. In fact, this person, for most of you, already has a strong attraction to you. Um, you're, you're, yeah, I'm seeing like a siren. So I feel like you're kind of like a moth caught in a flame here, sweets. This person's just drawn you in towards them. A lot of confusion on both sides, a lot of mystery here, um, and a strong feeling of transformation in this group. There is a strong feeling of wanting one thing, but putting on a poker face and showing another thing. So let's see what's going to happen in your near future. We have the full card in the upright position telling us that there is going to be a new beginning for this group. There's going to be a blank slate in your love life, there's going to be this feeling of you taking a leap of faith and doing so from a place of, if you don't know, you never grow. Like you feel very optimistic about this and you feel very determined to give yourself an opportunity um, to start fresh. I definitely see you closing one door and opening another though. Like you have to kind of let go of something in order to move forward. Letting go of baggage, letting go of any loose ends, um, making sure that you are clearing the way for the best possible start in this new chapter. So what is happening in the near future for group two when it comes to their love life? <clears throat> Oh, the Knight of Wands. Um, where do I start? I gotta be careful, we're on YouTube. We also have the Emperor reversed. What else can you tell group two about what's coming in the near future for them? <clears throat> Five of Swords reversed. Why is the Emperor reversed? I can tell you got big dick energy. It's crazy. I'm hearing the Saweetie version. We have the Eight of Wands. Oh my gosh, who are you? The back of the deck, we have the Magician reversed. So, oh my gosh, group one. I don't know what to tell you. You have a very positive reading. This person could be a secret admirer or y'all could have been in a shared community for some time, like a workplace or any setting where you visit frequently and this person's there. Now, the thing about the situation is you are going to have a strong energy of passion about you in the near future. You're very determined to move things forward for yourself. You're letting go of the feeling of risk and um, what's the work? Stoicism? You know, when you're just so kind of 
so tight lipped that you don't let anything on. I think that's the word stoicism, like being very stoic. You're kind of letting your hair down here and having some fun. And I do see you trying to work on making sure that you don't have any regrets with someone. Okay. Now I want to be honest with you. For some of you, you are really following a connection here that is quite strong like and in terms of it feels like a soulmate there's something about this person while you may have differences with Sagittarius being here um you feel very healed towards like drawn towards them based off of healing and transitions that you've had to make recently and it feels like this is the next step for you um whereas for others of you I just feel like you've been through enough in your love life to want to live now where if somebody piques your interest and if you find a strong attraction to them and you can't stop thinking about them, then you, you're in a position where you need to seek them out and, and see what it means because you're sick of having loose ends or you're sick of leaving things up to what if maybe one day, you know? So that's what this feels like. <coughs> Excuse me. It feels like a situation where you need to know, like, is this something big is this profound is this going to go somewhere and so in the near future I do see you reaching out and taking a leap of faith with this person and I see this person reacting very positively I do see travel for some of you but for most of you this nine of night of wands is about sexual union and movement forward in general I see a lot of passion a lot of communication and I see this feeling of wanting to kind of keep um keep in touch so it could be a fling or somebody could be moving shortly afterwards or there could be like a distance that ensues. But there's just this feeling with the five of swords reversed of we got to keep in touch. Like I need to see you again. I need to hear you again, even after I go. So I do think with this emperor reversed, regardless of the fact that this could be a very risky thing to do or like logically this isn't the best thing that you should do right now. Um, you just have to know. You just have to throw caution to the wind and go, you know what? If I don't try, I'll never know. Um, if I don't go, I'll never grow. That's what this feels like. And I think with the magician reversed here, this isn't your usual approach or there's something about this that is coming across as very risky. And yet you do still feel compelled to do it, if that makes sense. Is there anything else they need to know? The six of wands. I see success. I definitely see a lot of passion and I see the opportunity to feel seen by the person that you're interested in. So I feel like you're in a position to kind of feel like this person is very flattering towards you. Like that's the best way that I could describe it is like, this is the kind of person who their energy for you is very addictive but not in a, like an unhealthy way it's more that like it's very healing and you want more of it and it feels like there may be a distance at times or they may live at a distance to you so you just got to kind of make up or the most out of the time that you have and you don't entirely know where the future lies but right now you're just so focused on giving enough to the present and making sure that you're giving enough to the here and now. I see so much passion between the two of you. I really think that this is a very positive message for this group and I feel like it could really work out for the long term. There's just so much chemistry. Um, the only thing would just be trying to grow those emotions with each other. All this passion is beautiful and it stems from having feelings but in the near future, literally all I can see is like sex. Um, not saying that's a bad thing. Um, spirits like look again. Okay. Quality time, quality time, not just sex. Sex can be an, a, one of the ways that we spend quality time with our partners. Yeah. Because you just seem to really miss this person when they're not around you. And for some reason they may travel for work or they could just live at a distance or their schedule could be all out of whack. So you don't know when you're going to see them again. You just feel like you really like you miss them and you need to make sure that you do everything you can with them while you have them. Um, it's interesting. Let's get some advice for you. What is the closing advice for group two before we go into the extended? What is the closing advice? 
for group two. Okay, what is the closing advice for group two, please, Spirit? Okay, one more card. Yeah, I literally feel like this is infatuation at its finest. And I'm not saying it's not going to develop into love, but like you wouldn't be able to get a fork between the two of you, like glued. Um, picking up on so much sexual energy today is crazy. It's crazy. Is there any other advice that you have for group two? Crazy. Yeah. I mean, it's insane. That's literally the only message that I'm seeing for this group. So if that doesn't resonate, you may have messages in another group. Because the more that I look at the cards, the more I'm like, I really don't, I really don't know how I could put this any other way. I'm so sorry. But if that doesn't resonate, you have messages in other groups. Now, your first bit of advice is the five of wands, challenging times. We also have the chariot to seven here and we have helpless and hopeless, the eight of swords reversed. Your last card is agreement, strawberry, which is reversed. But with my oracle cards, I don't necessarily take reversals as their meaning. I just take them and we intuitively pick up what is needed. Now for you guys, I do think that the chariot is reversed on purpose because there is a feeling here of moving very quickly with this kind of person this person I don't know what the heck is the deal it could just be a very fatal attraction okay like the two of you move very quickly and I think that your advice here is to first of all pay attention to your fears and second of all don't be afraid to slow things down if you do feel like things are moving too quickly with this person. The five of wands is talking about a change in energy and I feel like this change will be quite quick but I can also see how with the five of wands part of your advice involves in how you allow other people to helpfully and unhelpfully involve themselves in your love life whether you're seeking them out for advice like that Hierophant was suggesting or whether you are comparing your love life and your person to other people and other relationships. There is a feeling here of don't overcomplicate the situation by drawing too many comparisons or by pulling too many people into the picture. It really feels like at some point you've just got to kind of simplify it and go with what you feel is best for you. I do think that if you get advice, you should get it from someone who knows you best, who has good intentions and who has a fairer understanding of the situation as well, because it feels like you may at times, especially when you miss this person or especially when things um, start to speed up, you may create more complications through comparison or just involving too many people. Now with the eight of swords here reversed, I do think that your love life is a matter of perspective and I feel like you're getting out of a cycle or you have the ability next to break out of a cycle that may have felt very helpless and hopeless as though you didn't have a lot of options and choices. I do think that right now in your present suites, if you wanted to, you could be entertaining more than one suitor. The spirit is really encouraging you that if you choose to date multiple people at the same time, move ahead slowly because I feel that for most of you, there is one person in particular who is really going to start to take up a lot of your energy and they are going to help change your perspective on love and your love situation right now. And I see with agreement being your last card that the advice here for your group has a lot to do with finding a partner who fits with you, with your being, with your personality, with what you need in your routine, in your lifestyle, with someone who can understand you. Maybe you have similar interests as well. You don't necessarily need to have similar interests, but you should have mutual respect and mutual understanding of each other's needs and each other's personalities. And I feel like your advice here is that relationships are work 
and they take time. So when finding the right partner, there are going to naturally be ups and downs. There are going to be challenging times. There are going to be delays or blockages. And there's going to be times when we get really in our head about something and react from a place of fear or anxiousness or even anger. So I think that your next partner is going to really reel you in with a strong sort of chemistry and then kind of put you through it a little bit and, and really challenge the way that you thought things were going to go because it seems like this relationship that's coming for you next, especially if you're single currently, is going to take work. So group two, that's what I'm seeing for you, sweets. You got a lot of very specific messages. I don't usually get messages like this on my channel. My channel usually has messages for people who are mostly in separation or who, who don't really have someone coming in like tomorrow. So I hope this resonated for you. If it didn't, you could have messages in other groups or maybe this just isn't your reading this time around. We're clearly channeling a very specific sort of situation here. But I want to thank you so much, group two, for all your time and energy in watching me today. I am going to take this into the extended reading now where we will take the reading further. For those who resonated with this message, we are going to have a look at your current blockages in love and advice on how to overcome them. We're going to have a closer look at the main energy in your reading, what their personality is like, how you can identify them, and we'll get some channeled messages from them in terms of how they see you and their intentions towards you. And then we're also going to have a look at let me double check. I know we're getting advice for the blockages, but there was one other thing we were supposed to ask, Spirit. I've got my little notes here. Um, your next big changes and advice. So the next major changes in love in terms of what will be happening in the immediate future, in the next couple of months, and then in the coming year. So that's what we're going to look at in the extended. If this reading resonated and you want to join me in the extended, I shall see you there. Otherwise, thank you so much for all your time, your energy, your support, and I shall connect with you in another video. Bye. three and welcome if you chose the dreamy moons tarot deck then this is going to be your reading welcome 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 for today's reading we're asking spirit what is going on in your love life we're going to be having a look at your recent past your present situation and your near future i am going to have an extended reading as well excuse me um just a heads up the extended reading has been ridiculously lengthy and detailed. We're going to have a, a lot to cover. We'll see what comes out in the first part of your reading first. That's how they usually work. And then I'll talk more about the extended at the end. <clears throat> so let's get into it. The mailman's here. So the dogs are going off as they do. Very good guard dogs. Thank God. Okay. Group three, please spirit. Tune me into group three's energy. What is going on in their love life? Group three. What is going on in group three's love life? Please, Spirit. What is going on in group three's love life? What happened in the recent past for group three? What happened in the recent past for group three? Okay. What happened? What's happening now? What's happening now for group three? Thank you. <laughs> what's happening in the near future for group three I'm going to kind of try to keep this general I think I personally am attracting a lot of love thank god but I'm going to try to keep this general because all three groups have been so positive <laughs> and while I genuinely love that I, I need to count for the fact that we're all on different journeys. So I'm going to keep this general, but you have a person here in your present with the King of Stars. This is the King of Pentacles. At the back of the deck, we do have the Queen of Wands. So this is telling me a little bit more about your group. The Queen of Wands is reversed. So I'm going to be clarifying all your cards. Let's start with the recent past. 
In the recent past, we have the Three of Cups and the Five of Stars reversed. So it's highly likely, my sweet group threes, that in the recent past, you're in an energy of trying to let your hair down, potentially overcoming a feeling of loss or a a situation that did not go the way that you were hoping in love where you may have with the five of stars be overcoming a, had to overcome a feeling of rejection or it was a feeling of you just didn't get as close to somebody as you were hoping to. With that five of stars reversed, it feels like you were trying to preoccupy yourself with other connections, other social situations, other joyful hobbies or interests. Um, in order to get your mind off what you didn't have. In the recent past, this group was really trying to distract themselves. And I see it coming from different points, right? For some of you, you were genuinely just trying to stay invested in the overall image of what you want in love and trying to get through a rough patch. Whereas others of you, it feels like you were just trying to let your hair down, cut loose, not thinking too far ahead, not thinking too far back, just literally trying to distract yourself in the present moment. Let's clarify and have a look with our second deck. Oops. <clears throat> what happened in the recent past for group three? What happened in the recent past for group three, please, spirit? What happened in the recent past for group three? Mm. Some of you are playing the field, dating around as well. Your group is split. I'm so sorry to do this to you. You'll know. You, you'll know. If you were either dating around, keeping your options open. And when I say dating around, maybe you were just kind of finding yourself playfully attracted to multiple people at the same time. But it feels like the goal here in your recent past with the Five of Swords reversed was mostly just to keep your options open. You were trying to stay optimistic, distract yourself from something else that was happening that wasn't at all the vibe. Like you felt rejected or you felt abandoned or you felt like the situation didn't work out as you're expecting um, in love. Um, otherwise, this was a material change that you were trying to distract yourself from, like a work situation that had become very much demanding. And so you were letting loose and really kind of distract yourself in other social situations on the side. Um, but the two cards that came out first were the two of pentacles and the three of pentacles reversed. We then also had the Knave of Pentacles and the Hanged Man. So I feel that for a lot of you, there was someone in your recent past who did pique your interest. They may have been different to your usual type, but I feel like some of you used your attraction to them as a form of escapism from whatever else was going on that didn't, with this Five of Stars, work out the way, didn't progress um, the way that you wanted it to. You felt like your needs weren't being met is how I would describe it. It's not that your expectations weren't being met, but you just weren't getting your needs fulfilled from this situation. So I see that the three of cups was very much about you just trying to cut loose and have fun. And these two pentacles cards reverse. The two of pentacles reverse tells me that some of you may not have been investing a lot of meaningful time into your love life. You were just sort of in your spare time meeting people casually, or you were just kind of not looking for anything too serious, especially with the three of pentacles reverse. It feels like the people that you were meeting, some of them you had no intention of seeing again. You just sort of went out and met someone fun and was like, that was cool. And then went home, didn't even want to see them again. It was just the interest of, of meeting somebody new, not even romantically. Like I feel like a lot of this is just socially. Um, and then on the other hand, there's an energy in this group of you getting really frustrated by the fact that you're in this high vibration, you have a lot of joy and you're trying to distract yourself, but you're not getting any serious offers. You're not getting anywhere with anyone. So the group is split because for some of you, you're the one that's purposefully avoiding meaningfulness because you just want fun and distraction. And then the other side of this group, you're on the other side where you're like, why am I only attracting meaninglessness? Like I want meaningful connection. There is definitely somebody here with the knave of pentacles who 
you had attraction to and there was potential with them. But I feel with the hanged man that things did not move forward well. Like they, they didn't go beyond a certain point. And it feels like it was either just a crush or an infatuation or just like a, a meaningful moment. And it just didn't progress beyond that. Um, unfortunately with the hanged man, we may have spent a lot of time thinking about them or, or daydreaming and fantasizing about them. But in reality, not much progressed. In reality, we were very much still stuck in this page energy, a lot of potential, but not much growth. So let's have a look at your present now. In your present, we have the King of Pentacles, which in this beautiful deck is the King of Stars. So you definitely have a person here, which opens up our extended for more meaning. But I can see in your present that this is either you realizing that you have a very high bar to meet. Um, you're someone who deserves someone very significant or you've attracted someone very significant. Okay. So if you resonate as the person who was distracting themselves, not looking for anything serious, oh, this is just a page. Let me just stroke their ego a little bit. Um, you may have accidentally bitten off a king of pentacles, someone who is looking for something very serious. And you kind of got them into this position now where they're like, I'm not a page, like I'm a king and I'm ready. Are you ready? Now, the other group who were looking for something more serious and may have been dealing with inconsistent, immature, or just underdeveloped situations, you're now realizing I don't, I can't settle for a page anymore. I, I need my king. I need my king of pentacles. I need someone who is wanting the same thing that I want, who is ready to give, who is loyal, who is committed, who is dependable, someone who is self-made or someone who at least is put together well enough to know what they want. So let's clarify this king of stars spirit <clears throat> for group three. What is this king of stars for group three? What is this king of stars for group three? What is this king of stars for group three, please, spirit? Clarify this king of stars for group three. I definitely see you getting the attention of somebody. Um, and, you know, use tarot as a guide. Tarot can't tell you to take action in terms of tarot can't force you to take action but I definitely see you getting the attention of somebody group three and this is so interesting because for once I did not get a single group that was going through a dark night of the soul or hermit energy so if this doesn't resonate this may not be the reading for you I'm very much picking up that for your group you have clear understanding of what you want and you seem to have the interest of someone or someone is definitely getting interested in you because you seem to be very aware of what you want. Now, at the back of the deck, we have a Knight of Swords reversed, a Seven of Wands Swords reversed, excuse me, the full reverse. Yeah, I'm hearing I'm no, um, I'm not naive. I'm not here to play games. I don't want to mess around. Like I know what I want. Three of cups reversed. I don't need any more friends. I've got enough friends. I've got enough drinking buddies. Like I don't need someone to warm my bed. Like I know what I want. We also have the nine of swords in the reverse position. So in your present energy, your love life, regardless of whether this is you or the person that you're dealing with, if this doesn't resonate as your energy, then obviously this is the person that you're dealing with. We have a clear person who knows what they want and they want something seemingly very serious. Um, they want a lot of attention. They want to really focus on growing the emotional intimacy and they want to make sure that they are recognized for what they can give. This is somebody who doesn't like to leave stones unturned. It is, this is coming out in most of my groups, which is a bit frustrating, but I see an energy here of not wanting to play around. Like if, if you're going, if you're not ready to go ahead, then be clear. That nine of swords reversed is this feeling of not wanting regrets. Um, and that's an energy that has been coming out a lot lately. So it is a bit frustrating because surely we can't all be on the same timeline, but I guess it's just a collective energy, especially because I'm filming this at the time of the new moon in Leo. There is a strong sense of loyalty and being represented fairly and accurately and, and doing things because 
you genuinely want to do it, not just to waste energy and waste time, which is where that feeling of not wanting to have regrets could be coming from. Collectively, this energy in your group is very much about wanting success, victory, connection emotionally, and needing to make sure you do something before it's too late. So I'm very curious about how you got into this energy. Um, I kind of want to ask a few more questions. Spirit, if this is, actually, let's just clear it up, clear it up very quickly. Group three, if this is them, what else can you tell them about their present energy with this king of stars? The emperor reversed. So there is a feeling here of needing to kind of let go of something. The emperor reversed with the high priestess and the moon. There is a mystery around your energy, either because you feel confused about somebody else's intentions or you feel confused about what is happening next. Having to let go of the ability to control everything in this situation is another common theme and struggling to do so because there's many cards that can represent letting go of control. But when we have an emperor reverse to represent that theme, it is a source of frustration. The emperor loves to be in control. The emperor needs to be responsible of the situation so that they can control what is being happening, what is happening next and what is being done currently. So this is a frustrating feeling of the fact that you don't know everything about what's happening in your love life. You don't know how they feel 100% if you have somebody. You don't know exactly how they're going to react if you tell them. There is a feeling of missing someone too and being nostalgic with this six of chalices. I don't know if I showed you that card, sweets. I'm sorry. You have the six of chalices, the six of wands, and the nine of swords reversed. So there is a feeling of thinking back and having a certain level of nostalgia and missing somebody as well. So... It's almost like missing them either because they would have been able to give you really good advice in this situation or missing them because my actions have caused separation between us and I really want to be around them now. Very interesting group. Your present circumstances seem to be um, a combination of a lot of different energies from your recent past. And I feel now your energy has become confused by your three of cups moment, by the fact that you may have been very open to sharing and distracting yourself with a large variety of people. Now you may be confused about where exactly things are headed now. Is there anything else you can tell them about their present when it comes to their love life? Last card is the magician. So we have a strong level of accountability coming out with the magician. The magician is reminding you of how powerful your thoughts are, your actions are, and how important it is to have an understanding of that amount of like accountability in a situation because it feels like you're afraid of making the wrong, taking the wrong action or having regrets and yet you're wasting valuable time thinking of these things that are in the past, if that makes sense. I don't mean to call you out like that. I don't know if that's even a bad thing. Reflection is very healthy, especially during a new moon. I feel like spirit is prepping you though to get back into a powerful energy of your actions are valuable, your words are valuable, so use them. Use the energy around you right now to propel yourself forward in the way that you want to be propelled forward. I definitely feel like it's, it's very bizarre that we could all have such a strong collective shift. It's interesting. Like I don't, you don't need to want commitment, you know, and yet for some reason it's come out in every group. So very interesting. Let's have a look at your near future now. We have more pentacles. So pentacles are all over this reading. We do have Gemini and Pisces as well, but there is a strong Capricorn, Virgo, and Taurus energy in your group. We have the seven of stars reversed and the queen of stars. So these are pentacles in this deck, just like the other cards. Um, you have the king and the queen out here. 
And that's the thing about your bottom deck energy. We also had the Queen of Wands reverse. The Queen of Wands is a very selective lover. That is not someone who makes themselves available to everybody. In fact, that is someone who is desired by many, but attracted to few, either due to the fact that they are trying to be purposefully protective and going like, I don't want to mix with you. I don't want your energy all over me. Or it could be that some of you are not aware of what you are attracting towards you. You're so focused on self right now. You're so focused on other things that you're not aware of how much you are attracting towards you. So in the near future, I do see the opportunity for commitment. If you haven't got it already, I see you growing something based on what is important to you with this queen of stars. So it's very important that in your present moment, you really strongly ground yourself in what is important to you. You have a sentimental feeling about you right now with this six of cups, this nostalgia, this missing energy. And that six of wands is begging for you to be recognized and getting the right attention from the right people. You may be very frustrated by the fact that you could be getting attention from the wrong people. With that nine of swords reversed, you could have instances replaying in your mind and being reminded of things that you do regret, which are prompting you to stay more focused on not having similar regrets in your present, let alone future. So with the seven of stars reversed, I can't help but feel like some of you are realizing that a certain situation that you were investing in when it comes to love just wasn't it. It wasn't it. It wasn't measuring up. There's somebody in your energy who may have been wasting your time. Um, and you're going to kind of turn around and go, you know what? I don't even really like like this, all this effort, all this time, all this energy isn't even worth like turnips. I've decided I'm going to grow watermelon instead. You know, like there's a feeling of uprooting something and changing how you move forward with that seven of pentacles reversed because something was not worth your time and your effort. So you're choosing to invest differently. And with the queen of stars being upright, it has a lot to do with what you value now. In the short time from your recent past to your near future, you're going to change your priorities and you're going to realize that there are certain things in your life that you need to prioritize more. And for some of you, it is family. Something could prop up that makes you want to spend more meaningful time with your family because you value their time more than you value the social aspects. But for others of you, it could be that you're being very selective with that queen of wands reversed over who you give your precious time and effort to. I definitely think with that queen of stars, you are taking a more grounded and potentially more patient approach. Um, if you're very single, if you don't have anybody that you're thinking of moving forward with, you're going to slow right down. But if you do have someone, which I think a lot of you have at least attracted one or two main people, um, you're going to be very cautious, practical, and safe with how you move forward. Not rushing, not trying to steam things up too quickly or really ignite the passion and just focus on that. Like I see you really getting into a sentimental energy of trying to take a very grounded and practical approach. So can we clarify what is happening in the near future for group three? You do feel like you've found a significant person or at least like a sig you've, you've found a significant feeling that you want to cultivate more of and if it's not prompted by a person it's prompted by an idea of what you want and you're confident that you will get it eventually so you're going to wait for it now at the back of the deck we do have the seven of chalices reverse so in the near future you're very clearly going to know what your heart wants and what is in your best interest romantically to pursue i see a wish fulfillment prompting this um, a strong sense of emotional um what's the word like understanding a self-awareness of what you need emotionally. You're very connected to your feminine energy and there is a sense of peace about this decision with the high priestess. You know that you're going to get what you need, what you want. So you're happy to wait for it if it isn't in your life currently. I think this group is unfortunately split between having somebody that they can cultivate these feelings with versus 
waiting for somebody that they can cultivate these feelings with. So I've got to kind of be general and just talk about the themes. We also have the 10 of cups with the ace of swords reversed. You're being so patient because you're not about to mess around and accidentally attach yourself to the wrong idea. I feel you really kind of going back though and reassessing an old idea that you had and recultivating it, reworking it from this queen of stars energy, from this growing potential over a long time of over a long period of time and trying to cultivate something that is meaningful to you. I see a happy outcome for you. I see you being surrounded by love actually, which is why many of you may not be rushing this process because you're gaining connection and love from other relationships like your family or like your workplace or through your through your passions, through your interests, through your social life, reconnecting with people in your recent past may have supplemented some of the loneliness that you were experiencing before. You know, I just feel like you don't need it. And so you're happy to wait for it, if that makes sense. That's what I'm feeling for your group, group three. Let's get you some closing advice. What is the closing advice for group threes? Love life currently. And then we'll go into the extended. I want to tell you about your extended because it's going to be very juicy. It's going to cover a lot of information. What advice do you have for group three when it comes to their love life currently? Yeah, I see you really attracting a very like marriage. Can I argue that you're attracting marriage? If you don't want marriage, you're attracting a very stable, happy family outcome with the 10 of chalices, the nine of chalices and the queen of stars. There's somebody who wants the exact same thing as you when it comes to love and somebody who is wanting to, willing to put in the work. Um, and you're definitely uprooting something that isn't growing for you anymore, clearing the road for someone new. So let's talk about this card first. We have grounding as your advice. I knew, I knew you were gonna have a lot of earth in your advice because you had earth in your tarot. So grounding is the potato card in this deck. We have the number five, we have Virgo, and we have earth in general connected to this card. As advice, it's, it's literally what that card says, sweet pea. Grounding yourself at this time is what is going to be most helpful and beneficial to your love life, mostly because this grounding isn't just about calming and breathing and chilling. It's more so about getting to a state of stability so that you can appreciate what it is that you want moving forward with Virgo here, having an idea of what your love life needs as you move forward. It almost feels like you're cultivating a plan, especially those who have someone. I feel you kind of making plans about the future together. And I see with the number five that your love life is changing. Um, and while these changes may not be rapid on paper, they are quite rapid in your energy. From the Three of Cups to this Queen of Pentacles, that is a huge change energetically. The amount and this type of people that you're attracting now is very different because of the growth that you've experienced recently and the awareness that you've come into in terms of the kind of attention you want and the kind of connection you want. That is huge. So it's important that you kind of cultivate an idea for yourself and a plan for yourself on how you want to move forward. And if you're in a relationship, I see you and your person really talking about the future and how this connection is moving forward. Now, we also have Heal, which is the star card in this deck, number 17. We've got Heart Chakra, the number four in this deck, which is the Heart Chakra number. And we have that Seven of Pentacles again, waiting patiently for the right thing. Your advice has a lot to do with patience, but it's not about blind patience, right? It's not about sort of standing there blindly waiting for something to come and you have no idea what it is and when it's coming. This is about seeing signs of success along the way. And if it isn't showing signs of success, then it isn't worth waiting for. But there is something here that is definitely worth investing in and waiting for. It feels like a lot of this waiting just has to do with slow progress, right? It's not gonna happen overnight, 
but that seems to be a blessing for your group because you seem to be getting love, connection, and growth in other areas of your life. So love does not have to happen rapidly for you. With Heart Chakra, the goal here for your group is to cultivate emotional connection and to keep those important people priorities in your life. I feel you having multiple sources of love um, through friendship, especially, but also family, whether this is blood family or chosen family, keeping those important people, important parts of your life with heart chakra. There's a lot of healing for this group. And while you may not think you need healing, this star card is more about keeping your present energy optimistic, open, and receptive of what is to come. It's not about finding problems and looking for red flags. It's more about keeping that ground clear, right? Uprooting things that should not still be growing so that we have freshly plowed soil ready for whatever it is that we're growing for our future. This is about keeping a healthy outlook in terms of our present circumstances ready for what is to come. I feel you really progressing and I see could see how some of this change may happen in your eyes so steadily that you're not seeing how impactful and how drastic it is. I think that this is the group where in a year your life could be very different. You've had some pretty big internal shifts and you're attracting a whole different kind of person now because of how you see yourself and what you are actually allowing. You attract a lot of people, but not everybody is allowed to come close to you. So that's what I'm seeing for you, group three, when it comes to what's happening in your love life right now. Let me grab my phone out and we'll talk about what we're covering in your extended reading. It is quite extensive. That's why I have a list on my phone. So for you, sweet pea, we're going to do what we did for the other two groups because it does fit. We're going to be getting more about your main person that you'll be dealing with moving forward. We're going to get more about their personality. Um, we're going to have a look at how they'll be feeling towards you or how they are feeling about you currently. We're going to get channeled messages from them as well to get a better understanding of who they are and how you can identify them. We're also going to have a look at your main blockages in love. We'll get advice around how to clear those blockages. Then we're going to have a look at your next big changes and we're going to get more advice. We're going to get advice throughout the whole thing. So there's going to be a lot of advice. So that's what we're covering in your extended reading. It's fairly juicy. A lot of information came through for group one and especially group two. So if you'd like to join me there, the link is in the description box. The goal is to get as much clarity, guidance, and information as possible. So you can move forward, making those informed decisions to the best possible outcome for you. Now, before you go group three, wherever you're going, thank you so much for joining me right here on YouTube. I appreciate all your time, your energy, your support, um, whether you're just supporting me or just the whole tarot community on YouTube, I really appreciate you for being here and I hope to connect with you very, very soon. Bye.